music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. On that last verse, it tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe. Who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. I just kind of got weird. Half of you weren't singing. We're going to do the chorus again. Sing it like you mean it. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Our Father, we come to you, Lord, so grateful for this opportunity just to lift your name in song. We do love you, Father, because you first loved us. Now, Lead us now in this hour that all that we do will bring honor and glory to your precious name. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Brother Dawson. Man, full crowd today. It's good to see everyone. Um, again, so uh, we said this last week, and just want to kind of say it again so that maybe if you weren't here last week, you'll know what's going on. Um, we've got a table back there, uh, the information station, right? And so if you have any questions on uh, things that you see in the bulletin or announcements or, you know, what's going on, what can I get plugged into, uh, we're going to be putting uh, information stuff back there. So... Uh, things like when, like when we go through VBS stuff or uh, Youth Falls Creek stuff or something like that. Um, if you have questions about it uh, and if you, you may be new or something uh, and you're like, man, like I really want to get some more information on what's going on with Falls Creek this year or, or whatever, uh, then at the end of the service you can go to the back of the table where that's at uh, and then someone should be there to be able to tell you Oh, actually, like, that's Dawson right there. Like, oh, go go talk to him. He's he's right there. Or you know, oh, that's that's who Karen is. You may see it in the bulletin, but uh, but this is her. And so go talk to her about that. Or here's some information that we can give you about what's going on at Hillside. Uh, things like that. So uh, as you're looking through the bulletin, uh, I'm not going to say all the names as much. Uh, anymore. I'll go through the announcements, but I'm going to say at the end of the service, go look at the information station and we'll get you plugged in wherever we need to get you plugged in. Does that sound good to everyone? Sound like a plan? Cool. Yes, thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, there's an opportunity for serving the Lord uh, one Sunday a month by watching the two and three year olds uh, during church. So look at uh, your bulletin for that. Saturday, June 8th, as uh, Mims Breakfast. Right, if I'm not mistaken, that's this coming Saturday, right? And it's at 8:30 a.m. So, men, uh, come up, come get some food, come enjoy yourselves, come fellowship with other men. Uh, it's going to be really cool. And then next Sunday, uh, we'll be going to the McLeod Nursing Home at 2 p.m. Okay, so anyone that can come and join in on that, come and hang out and uh, participate with us, we'd love to have you. Um, VBS, uh, continue to be praying for VBS, uh, signing up if you haven't already, uh, getting with the people that you need to get with if you haven't already done that, because um, it's coming quick, right? It's going to be June 10th through the 14th, uh, so it's it's really coming. 
Um, so again, I think that even before, with all the logistics and everything like that, even more than that, uh, that we could just all be praying for uh, VBS as it comes, um, just like we prayed for Children's Falls Creek coming up, or that, that was coming up, uh, and also be praying for the Youth Falls Creek that's going to be coming. Uh, so be doing that and continuing in that, uh, which moves into the next announcement. It's the youth are going to be going to Falls Creek uh, July 1st through the 6th, okay? Uh, and the cost is $65. Um, if you need any help with that or, or feel like, uh, you know, you have any more questions about logistics or anything like that, so you can talk to me um, and you can see, uh, you know, the information station kind of stuff. Uh, just talk to me and uh, get that all figured out. Um, yeah, and then so I put in there too. I had Terry put in there ways to pray. Uh, so if you want to go and look in the bulletin for that, that would be great. Um, and then if the Lord is leading you to uh, to give to the camp scholarships and expenses stuff, uh, please um, look in your, your pews. There should be love offering envelopes. Uh, that you can put money into that if the Lord is leading you to do that. Um, so definitely be uh, asking what God would have you do for that. Um, and then this is super cool too. Uh, a couple of uh, ministry opportunities. So the First Baptist Church of Hera has a need for workers at the ministry center. And it's on Main Street in Hera. So this is a cool opportunity for us as uh, Hillside to, uh, and, you know, as individuals, as Christians, to go and serve with our brothers and sisters in different places. Um, And it's from uh, Tuesday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., and Wednesday, 6 to 8. So uh, if God is leading you to donate, not only, you know, know, asking for for money or things like that, but but definitely to invest and donate your time to serve the Lord there, uh, then definitely be going and do that. Um, If you have any more questions, uh, just... uh, yeah, you can just go stop by and talk with someone named Geneva. So I would carry your bulletin so you can remember their name if you go. Because uh, I definitely would forget if it was me. Um, I think that's it, unless I'm missing anything. Does anyone else have any other announcements that I might have missed? Okay, good. Jim, you're up. They're up. Or you guys are up. You're up. First day we went was Wednesday, and you didn't know if you seen it or not. It was the armor of God, and it rained. <laughs> and it rained. And it rained on Wednesday. Now, there's Terry waiting. There we are, line up. This is all beforehand. And there's the rain. <laughs> and how, see how they're wet? Yeah. Brooklyn's shirt's wet. And I think we had a break in the rain at this point. We're trying to load up. Boys in there, boys rode in the old van going down. Girls got the new van. And we switched coming back. I would just say give them directions there. I don't know what. That's oh, that's lunch. Lunch when we got there. The girls again. Yeah, we had to stay in the cabin the first day, so we played a lot of games. And ping pong. And that's unpacking. I mean, that's nice organized. So, yeah, so some of them went down to see, look around when there was a break in the rain. And we're back playing cards again because it started raining again after the break and that operation thing is not that easy to do (laughs) I would say that was lunch yep there's our schedule of what we were going to do that during the week line up for uh, to eat 
Angelina came by and saw us. We're going down to evening worship. I think we've made it to the bottom of the hill. <laughs> and we're almost to the tabernacle. The work made it to the tabernacle. Yeah, you have to have your bags checked before you go into the tabernacle. Yeah, there's her missionary, the lady. Yes, the. In the tabernacle. That was our theme. I don't, it's hard to get pictures when it's dark in the tabernacle, but that's the band. They've got them on the side ones, too. They're a little bit better. That was our pastor for the week. Keith Coast. His name was Keith Coast, but everybody was calling him French Toast. That looks like we're still going. Oh, it's Icy Run. <laughs> That's waiting on the icy line. Still waiting at the icy line. Still waiting at the icy line. Still waiting at the icy line. No, I think we. Well, there, there's ice cream. I think. Okay. The, Nathan, the, no, that's, that's cold. Nathan's in the gray T-shirt. He was a young missionary that came and talked to us. <laughs> now they're playing Jungle Pong, which is a game of its own. <laughs> and Nathan, like I said, Nathan was our young missionary that came and talked to us the first night. Thursday. We're up to Thursday now. Oh, my goodness. That was just the first day. That was the first day. <laughs> 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 well, this is KP. We had biscuits that morning. <laughs> they're, they're actually washing the dishes. This is, yeah, this was the word search we did in our class. Those were the judges for the first. Oh, yeah, these two judged the, the rooms. The barracks the first morning. Okay, let me talk. <laughs> yeah, here we're at class, and we have class in our own cabin. This is the armor pieces. Oh, that was our game. This was a craft we were making the second day. Back at the tabernacle in the evening. Oh, maybe it's morning services. <laughs> These are our missionaries. They were from the Philippines. There's Okay. It was a game we played. <laughs> yeah, he was the preacher used balloons to be able to for his boys going swimming. We finally got some sunshine. Girls headed off to the swim. Yes, it's Thursday. That's the line for swimming. That was Emmy and Brooklyn. Brooklyn's feet. Boulder Springs. <laughs> the gum tree. We had to stop and put gum on the gum tree. That was my walking stick. That was a preacher trying to find an exit. <laughs> this is our group picture. This is our... Silly picture. There's the bell. Doug came and came Thursday night. And that's what us with Doug. Friday. More Bible story. We had watermelon. We had some good watermelon. 
for this early in the season. We're headed off to the tabernacle again. That's the missionary. That's the missionary. Okay, here they are, the missionaries up on the stage. I would say we're singing, but I'm not sure why our mouths are open. <laughs> Oh, that was it. Oh, this was at the Mission Fest. Shh, guys. There's Doug again. Yes, by Friday, Kevin showed up. If, if you're wondering where he popped in. <laughs> yeah, they have to get eight passport stamps to get a popsicle. There, they got their popsicles. This is a couple of girls going kayaking, waiting. You wait a lot. You wait a lot. There goes Emmy. There's Callie getting in. I was going to say, it looked like they ran into each other. Now the girl's getting ready to go swimming again. Okay, we're back at the tabernacle again. This must be, this is Friday, still Friday. <laughs> and I don't know what they were, you have to watch your sponsors. <laughs> yeah. There's, there we're at the icy stand. This is, a, this is Friday night at the icy stand. We were, we broke curfew. We did not get back in time, but we were not giving up till we got our icy. We got locked out. Locked we out. got locked out. <laughs> okay, and then Friday night the, the preacher talked to him, had devotion. And we're up to Saturday. Breakfast. Oh, Megan, Megan was having trouble with her hair, so the preacher was helping her out. He was going to style it for her. Oh, we're packed to go home. We're loading. And we don't know what happened on the floor, but... I think we've loaded them up. All right, I think that's it. testing there we go okay so we're going to play heads and tails everybody's got to stand everybody can play here's how it works we're going to do pra practice round first i'm going to flip a coin it's going to be on heads or tails you're going to guess which one it's going to be by doing heads or tails so i'm going to go one two three you're going to place your hand on your head or you're going to place your hand on your tail all right if you lose then you get to sit down we're going to play until the last one standing. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. So kids love this game. It went really well. Heads or tails? So one, two, three. And we have tails. All right. Oh, that was a practice round. That was a practice round. You get, we get to go again. We get to go again. All right. 
there are some people that are going, I'm not picking tails. <laughs> Whatever happens, I'm just going heads. I don't care. All right. All right. One, two, three. It's heads. All right. So put your hand on your tails. You got to sit down. All right. Boy, that was, that was about half of them are gone. All right. You ready? One, two, three. It's heads. So if you got your hand on your tails, you, you, you got to sit down. Okay. You guys are all still in. No, it was. Oh, that's right. I'm still in. Yay. All right. All right. One, two, three. It's heads. Tails got to sit down. Tails got to sit down. Jim. Yeah. <laughs> All right. One, two, three. It's heads. <laughs> Jim. Hey, after church, you and I are going to go to the casino, okay? That was a joke. I would never go to the casino with Jim. All right, here we go. One, two, three. It's heads. All right. Boy, we, we got to get a tails here. One, two, three. It's tails. Everybody got heads. Oh, Shauna's still up. She's the winner. Yay. All right, come up here. Come up here. Come up here. Okay, we took uh, 13 children, 7 adults, 20 of us all together. We have a few missing this morning, but we still have a good good group that came. They had lots of fun. I say they're good kids. They're just full of energy. Sometimes we had tag team. <laughs> they had more than we did on some of them, but they were all really good kids. Okay, so you'd like to say something? My favorite thing was tabernacle. Favorite thing was ping pong. Kayaking. Everything. No. Okay, what's your favorite one? Mine was I don't know. The swimming. Mine was going on the slide. That one was one of my favorites too. The water slide was fun. Uh, mine was the, uh, he did a great job of on the, fi- yeah, I think it was Friday. When did he do the balloon thing? Friday. No, it was Friday night, and then Wes followed up with it at the cabin, and that was a really um, good illustration of God made us, and he can decide how he's going to use what he's made. And I thought that was a really, I love that, that stuck in my mind. Well, I talk to God. We're going to get serious now, okay? (laughs) Going up a hill, I pray God would get me to the top of that hill (laughs) without a heart attack, okay? Okay. (laughs) I pray to God that I wouldn't strangle any child. (laughs) (laughs) And I, and I guess my biggest prayer was we were at the creek and we were swimming. There's this beautiful cottonwood and it had roots down. A lady was sitting there and oh, I was she just waiting. I was just waiting <laughs> for that lady that to leave. Out. Waiting for that lady to leave because I was going to sit on that root, lean back on that tree and just watch some kids play. She left. Oh, this is my chance. I sit down there and I get relaxed. I look in the water. And an anaconda is swimming towards me. It's not an anaconda. 
I called on the name of the Lord. <laughs> Sweet Jesus, help me. Okay? I have never seen her move that fast in my life. I still got the moves. <laughs> I talked to God while I was there. But I did take that picture out. We had a picture of her across the parkway like this. <laughs> That's when I was praying, thanking God for saving my life. And there was times it was like, um, you know, where's Postman? He's not here. It was like herding cats sometimes. But um, they were good, and I enjoyed it, and I'm looking forward to going back. Yeah. I'm glad it's over. <laughs> Let's tell the truth. It's, it's long and hard to cook three meals a day for 20 people. So I'm today's my day of rest. <laughs> Thank you. I like the preacher in the bacon song. Oh yes, he had a bacon song. I guess we never. We'll have to get it. It's on YouTube somewhere. We'll have to get it and sh share it one time for you. Bacon was, bacon's what he loved. We can have it tonight. Okay. It's always good. I want you to turn to 138. One, at Calvary, you got the bulletin has 136, but the song title is right. We're going to use this as our offertory hymn today, so I'm going to ask you to stand with me, please. We're just going to do the first and last verses. I ask the ushers to come forward. 138 at Calvary, first and last verses. <laughs> Prayer, please, sir. O great Heavenly Father, we just again humbly come before you, Father. Thank you for this day and this opportunity and to be in your house, Father. And we just pray for this week that the, our children have fall straight, and Lord, we pray that the Lord touch their hearts. And Lord, just may you touch their lives, what, what's going on in the Lord's family. But Father, we just ask that you bless this offering. Amen.
All right, one, two, three, Bibles! All right, you didn't know what was going to happen, did you? The kids did. You didn't. All right, um, so we had a great time at camp. I'm thankful to everyone that, that was praying for the kids. Um, we had uh, one salvation down there, um, and and so it, 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 it works. You know, Falls Creek is a great place to go. It's a great place to uh, get away from what's going on around you to uh, to get people focused, get kids focused on on uh, where they stand with Jesus Christ. Um, so thank you for uh, allowing the kids to go to supporting those that needed it, praying for us while we were down there. And um, I have found the secret to Carrie's biscuits. And I'm not sharing it, but I now know. If you've never had Carrie's Biscuits, you're missing out. They are awesome. Uh, Second best biscuits I've ever had. I have to say that because Arians are really good too. (laughs) All right. um, So last week we, we finished up with uh, Romans chapter 7. Uh, I had a great uh, great time doing that because uh, uh, I, I would share in the morning and then Dawson would come and share on the same verses in, in the evening. We're going to have to do that again. I thought that went really well and got different perspectives and, and uh, you know got us to look at some things a little bit differently. I learned a few things um, uh, from, from Dawson and, and he came at it on ways that, you know, sometimes I just don't think about it that way or, or my thought process was a little bit different. And so uh, I thought it was great. Thank you for uh, doing that, um, Dawson. And uh, but here we are, we're, we're, we're starting the summer and I wanted to do a different series. So we're going to put Romans on hold for uh, for a little while. I'm going to do something that I've only ever done one other time in all of my ministry. And that is that I'm going to pretty much preach from a book. Um, That I'm going to use the ideas from uh, a book. Now... um, how, have you ever heard of Andrew Murray? Wow, really? Okay, so Andrew Murray is a theologian. He lived in uh, he lived from 1828 to 1917. He was a South African preacher. Uh, he schooled in England, but keep in mind that what he's going to write, what we're going to read, was written over a hundred years ago. And I I picked up this book because Andrew Murray, uh, he has great quotes. He's one of those guys that preachers quote from the pulpit. You may not realize it or or they may say, and Andrew Murray said this and give you a quote and you just don't log the name down. Um, But he's one of those guys. He is, um, there's a story of Andrew Murray where uh, his, his, one of his big things was uh, the school of prayer. And he, he used that scripture where the disciples come to Jesus and they say, teach us to pray. And he, he said, how often do we do that? And he wrote a book on, on prayer. And uh, it's probably his most popular book that he's written. And it's, uh, there's a story told of him that later in his life, a young theologian wrote that uh, he got to go to a prayer meeting with Andrew Murray. And there's a whole group of theologians gathered around and Andrew Murray walks in and, he, and he's, he's, he's kind of getting up in years. He's getting a little bit more lame. And so he, he, um, he sits down 
And he says, and, and all of these people were just in awe. It's Andrew Murray. Kind of like what we might think if, if we were to have, have met uh, Billy Graham, okay? He's, he's, he's a popular name. We'd be like, oh, we're going to hear from Billy Graham. And if you get to be in a private session with Billy Graham, you would be, you'd have been like, oh, this is going to be great. And he says, and, and Andrew Murray comes in. He sits in this chair, and he's going to talk to us about prayer. And the first thing he says is he says, let's pray. And he says, God, teach us to pray. And he says that, and the the young theologian that was part of that just said, I was just, here he is a man who has devoted his life to prayer and asking God to teach him to pray. So what happened to me, uh, it, it was, it was Christmas time. My wife, she, she gave me a couple of Bible study books and they're called uh, Read and Reflect with the Classics. Now, I'd heard of Andrew Murray, and she knew that I had heard of Andrew Murray, and so she got this book, and uh, it's a wonderful gift, uh, and it's a classic book. It's written over 100 years ago, and so I picked it up, and I decided to do the Bible study just for my own personal benefit. I've done this Bible study three times since Christmas because it's... It's what he says in here. We all need to hear. And so I've, I, I decided I'm going to take this to the church. They, they need to hear this. We don't normally pick up books that are 100 years old. We want to get the latest uh, book put out by J.D. Greer or David Platt or Matt Chandler. These are the names that, uh, uh, that we, ref- we, we look at now. And, uh, but the a hundred years ago, Andrew Murray was that guy. And he was the guy that was leading the way in some, uh, some theology. Now, if you Google Andrew Murray, you will find that he is not a Baptist. Okay? He, uh, he, was, he, he was kind of one of those that started uh, the Pentecostal movement a hundred years ago. Okay? So, not what what we think of Pentecostal uh, today, but uh, kind of the, uh, he, he did have ideas and thoughts on faith healing that I disagree with. He did have ideas and thoughts on some other aspects that I disagree with. I don't agree with everybody. I don't necessarily always agree with the president of the SBC. Okay, we have difference of theology. SBC being the Southern Baptist Convention, which we were part of. Okay, so what do we do with that? Can we still learn? Yes, we can. And so we're going to go through this this book, um, uh, Absolute Surrender, written by Andrew Murray. Um, I'm going to use a lot of quotes from him. We're going to uh, use parts of this book, but I want to I want you to see. And I want you to start to to realize what he's calling us to. Now, re- remember, he is writing a hundred years ago, and the, one of the most interesting aspects of this book to me is he's writing where the church is a hundred years ago. And as I'm reading it, and I'm going, "Wow, that's how we got here. Why we're doing the things we're doing now." And he's writing about what it was like then. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started because uh, I don't know how long you guys are going to make it. It was it's a little bit longer of an introduction than I wanted. So uh, we're going mo- to move on. And uh, for the first chapter of this book, he, this is the base scripture, scripture. 1 Kings chapter 20, verse 1 says, Now King Ben-Hadad of Aram assembled his entire army. Thirty-two kings, along with horses and chariots, were there with him. He marched up, besieged Samaria, and fought against it. He sent messengers to the city, to King Ahab of Israel, and said to him, This is what Ben-Hadad says. Your silver and your gold are mine, and your best wives and your children are mine as well. Then the king of Israel answered, Just as you say, my lord, the king, I am yours, along with all that I have. So let, let's, let's get started with a word of prayer, okay?
Father God, we thank you for this time, Lord. We, we pray that you will bless us uh, with your spirit so that we can, we can gain what you have for us, Lord. We thank you and we praise you in everything that you do. In your son's precious name, amen. Now, the, the focus of this passage of scripture is going to be there in verse 4 where the king writes back and he says, just as you say, my Lord, the king, I am yours along with all that I have. Now, Andrew Murray is a little bit, di- we have very different styles in preaching because Andrew Murray, he can look at a passage of scripture like that and he's going to develop a whole book based on verse 4. Okay, I, 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 I have a hard time doing that. I just This is scripture, this is what it says. You guys know me. This is scripture, this is what it says. This is how it applies, you know. That's kind of what I do. Um, so we're, we're going to look at that. And he's talking about this as, I am yours along with all that I have. I want to read a paragraph for you, and I promise I won't do this very often. But this is going to set the stage for the rest of this uh, time that we're going through. So I want you to pay attention to this, this paragraph. He writes, You know, in daily life, what absolute surrender is. You know that everything has to be given up to its special de- definite object and service. I have a pen in my pocket. And that pen is absolutely surrendered to the one work of writing And that pen must be absolutely surrendered to my hand if I am to write properly with it. If another holds it partly, I cannot write properly. This coat is absolutely given up to me to cover my body. The building is entirely given up to religious services. And now, do you expect that in your immortal being, In the divine nature that you have received by regeneration, God can work His holy work every day and every hour unless you are entirely given up to Him. God cannot. The temple of Solomon was absolutely surrendered to God when it was dedicated to Him. And every one of us is a temple of God in which God will dwell and work mightily on one condition absolute surrender to him god claims it god is worthy of it and without it god cannot work his blessed work in us now i think about that so what he says is that if we are going to be used by god then we have to give ourselves in absolute surrender or it just doesn't work so we're going to look at uh, uh, we're going to look at we're going to continue covering the rest of this chapter chapter. We're going to look at a few things. The first thing that we're going to look at is that God accomplishes your surrender. So let's look at a, the, this. Uh, God this is what he writes. God does not ask you to give the perfect surrender in your strength. Or by the power of your will. God is willing to work it in you. I want you to think about that for just a moment. Because I believe, because I believe this because I've seen it in people and I've seen it in myself. That I want to do things by my own strength. I want to surrender to God by my own strength. I had one of the most heartbreaking events ever happen to me yesterday morning. Has nothing to do with our kids, but one of the things I do at Falls Creek is I go and um, I, I do pastor advisor. I love doing it. I have done it. As many times I've been to Falls Creek, I've done that. And what that means is when kids make a decision, they go and speak to an encourager. After they speak to the encourager, the encourager has talked to them about what they want to do, whether rededication or whether they are going to um, uh, give their life to Jesus Christ or if they are surrendering to mission, any of that. And then after they've talked with them and prayed a prayer with them, the pastor advisor just kind of follows up a little bit and talks with them for, for just a moment 
uh, to see what they've done, kind of get the feel that, oh, well, they understand what they're doing. They, they, they kind of, they, they get this. And then uh, we, 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 we just pray with them and, and, and send them on their way. And it's, it's, it's really uplifting as a pastor. I've, I've worked with kids. I've talked with kids that have given their life to Jesus Christ. I've been there with kids as they prayed to receive Jesus Christ. Not in our cabin, but uh, I mean, kids in our cabin, but also kids uh, from all over the state. It's a wonderful experience. But sometimes it's not. Because yesterday this kid comes up and, and, he, and the encourager says, yeah, he, he's just not ready to pray. Well, that, for me, that's just a moment to let's share the gospel one more time. And so I asked this kid, I said, what, why did you come down? And what he said to me was, I want to stop sinning. And I said, that's great. How do you do that? You know what he tells me? He says, uh, by, um, by just stopping, just not doing those things. And I said, what will that get you? That'll get God's, God will love me more if I stop. So let me talk to you for a moment. I shared the Romans road with him. That's my favorite one to use. Okay. You can use whatever you want. I like the Romans road. It's, uh, it's, it's easy. It goes through. And uh, so I shared the Romans road. I get to Romans chapter uh, 10, verses 9 and 10, where it t- says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and God raised him and believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So I, 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 I asked him, I said, do you understand what the word Lord means? He says, no. I said, y- it means master, boss, the one who's in charge. These are words that kids understand. OK, Th- it, that's what it means. And I said, do you understand? He's like, yes. I said, so what you're saying, I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the boss, the master, the one who's in charge, which means that I am going to live that life out, that that's what I'm doing, that I'm going to invite him to be in control, that he is Lord of my life. And I explained this to him. I said, do you understand what that means? That you are going to completely deny self and give yourself over to Jesus Christ. I said, do you understand what that means he says yes i understand i said what does it mean he says that he's going to take control of my life and i'm going to live for him this is what he said that i'm going to live that life i said do you want to do that right now and he says no i do not that's not absolute surrender he can't be he wants to do it by his own strength he wants to do it by the strength that he has to say that i can stop But God does not ask us to give to the perfect surrender in your strength. That's not what He's asking. He's not asking for you to stop doing these things and just say, in my power, I will do it because you could not. So He says, by my strength, Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, for it is God who is working in you both to will and and to work according to His good purpose. It is God who is doing the work. It is God who is working. It's not in your strength. It's in the strength of God who is working according to His good purpose. So God accomplishes your surrender. The second thing... God accepts your surrender. Mark chapter 9, verse 21, it says, How long has it been happening to him? Asked, uh, Jesus asked his father. From childhood, he said, Many times it has thrown him into a fire or water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, If you can, everything is possible for the one who believes. Immediately, the father of the boy cried out, I do believe, help my unbelief. So, 
uh, in, in this story, we, we, we see that there, there's a father who asked Jesus to come and the boy is being tormented by a demon, throwing himself into fires, throwing himself into water. And, and, and the father says, uh, uh, but if you can do anything, have compassion on him and help us. And what does Jesus say to him? If, if you can, he doesn't believe. He, he, he has a hope, but he doesn't believe. But he says, that, that he says, if I do believe, help my unbelief. What does it mean to say, help my unbelief? What does it mean to put ourselves in that father's, uh, those words? I, I do believe, help my unbelief. What does he say? He's saying, I yield myself in absolute surrender to God. Help my unbelief. I yield myself to absolute surrender. He says, I come with a trembling heart. What what, what does that mean? It says, I I do not feel the power. I, 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 I do not feel the determination. I do not feel the assurance. I don't always feel those things when it comes to God. I don't always know those things. I don't always feel the power of God in my life. I don't always feel the determination. I don't always feel the assurance. It also means that if you come to God like this, it will succeed. Help my unbelief, God. That you come to, you help my unbelief. And when you do yield yourself, sorry, before we get there, there's another quote I want you to read uh, that I want you to see out of this book. It says, Murray says, be not afraid, but come just as you are. And even in the midst of your trembling, the power of the Holy Ghost will work. Now, I will tell you. Uh, that, that Murray, he uses the term Holy Ghost. I usually use the term Holy Spirit. For this study, we will use the term Holy Ghost. They're synonymous with each other. Okay? So it, it, I usually say Holy Spirit, but uh, Andrew Murray uses the term Holy Ghost. So now listen to this. And when you do yield yourself in absolute surrender, let it be in the faith that God does now Accept of it. Let it be in the faith that God accepts it. So, we've seen that God accomplishes your surrender. We've seen that God accepts your surrender. We're going to look at that God maintains your surrender. Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 says, For it is God who is working in you both to will and to work according to his good purpose. We've already looked at this. We can pull out of this that uh, it is God who is is working in us. I, I, I want to tell you something that is commonly said among believers. I've heard it said. I've already kind of alluded to it. But believers will often say something like this. I want to rededicate my life. I want to rededicate my life. And, 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 and why do they want to rededicate their lives? I, I've seen this in youth ministry. I've seen this in children. I've seen this even in adults. People sitting in my office. People talking to me at camp where I want to re dedicate my life meaning that at some point in time i gave my life to jesus christ but for some reason at some point in time they have felt the stir of god and have consecrated themselves to god but it faded away at some point in time i I, they gave their life to jesus christ they, they surrendered but it's gone the 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 initial onset the desire the uh, the drive the whatever it is the, the 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 spirit's fire it's gone 
And so they say, I want to rededicate my life because they hear something or something sparks and I want to rededicate my life. We hear this said, but we have to ask this question, why did it fade? Why does it fade? Why, and maybe you've experienced this in your life, why does it fade? Now, I will be honest with you. I have had high points and low points in ministry, in my walk with Jesus Christ. But I remember the day that I, I got saved in the, in the year 2000, that uh, I, 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 got, I, I came into my room, I was all alone, and I said to God, I said, God, do not let this be one of those things in my life that just, I have a zeal for it, and then it's gone. So I've never, I've had low points, but I've never lost this, I want to rededicate my life. I've never gotten to that point. Um, maybe you have. And I'm not, I'm not judging anyone, but maybe you've gotten to that point. I want to rededicate my life because the zeal, the power, the, the, the knowledge, all of it, it's just gone. I don't have it anymore. So why did it fade? Here's why it fades, because people do not believe this. When God has begun the work of absolute surrender in you, and when God has accepted your surrender, then God holds himself bound to care for it and to keep it. See, we think we have to keep it by our power. We think we keep that zeal by us. But it is God who holds us. It is in God's hand that we are placed. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Is that possible? To know the will of God? Is that possible to not be conformed to this age? Is that possible to be transformed? Is that possible? I guarantee you if I was to ask many of you, you would say, oh, that's absolutely possible. But many of us don't live as if it is. We think, we, we try, I strive, and I can't accomplish it. I don't succeed. I, I fail all the time. And we quit trying. And we give up. Not realizing that we are held by God. And, in, and, and he says, do not be conformed to this age. Don't do the things of this world. He says, but be transformed by your mind. By saying to God, help my unbelief. Help me that I surrender to you, that I give to you. And he says, so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing and perfect will of God. So that you may know him, so that you may know his calling in your life. And God is willing to maintain your life. Only let your absolute surrender be one of simple, childlike, and unbounded trust. Help my unbelief. Childlike trust. You know that I can take my 16-month-old son grab him and launch him into the air. And he smiles. You know why? Because he knows I'm going to catch him. He trusts me. 
And he doesn't worry that I'm going to miss him and he's going to hit a concrete floor. He doesn't worry about it. Because he has childlike faith. Childlike trust. But do you know that if I take my 14-year-old son and try to throw him into the air, which I can do, he fights me the whole time. Because he has an adult-like faith. Even though I've never dropped him. Well, there was this one time. No, it was fun. He thought it was fun too. But I think he learned. We were playing, we were wrestling in the hall. Okay? One of the games we had to play is he had to, I I would hold a pillow. Okay? And he would try to run past me in the hall. And if he could get to the other side of the hall, then he won. He's like, yeah, I won. Okay? And so he would run and I, boom, hit him with the pillow. And he'd fly back. He'd get up and start running at me. Boom. (coughs) Well, one time he decides he's going to go airborne. And he's running. Superman leap of faith. To which I'm like, I got to get him so that he doesn't make it. So I hit him in midair. In the legs. So that he flips. And he lands on the other side, gets up and runs. And says, I made it. And says, that was about the coolest thing that ever happened to me. It hurt, but it was fun. But see, what is a childlike faith? What is the childlike faith? What does Jesus say? He says, let them come to me. If you're not like one of them. We practice adult faith. Here's what we do. Here's what I see us do. Here's what I do. God... I've got a good job. Now I can trust you. I've I've got I've got what I need. Now I can trust you. Because if you don't come through, I've got the job. I've got the money. I've got the things that can support me. Just in case God doesn't come through. But that's not faith at all. At all. That's unbelief. That's God, if you can. And Jesus says to him, if you can, if you can, but we come to him all the time with that attitude. God, if you can. Did Elijah pray fire out of the sky saying, God, if you can. No, what did he pray? God, do this. I know that you can. I know that you will protect me. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What did they say? Our our God can protect us. Can your God protect you from me? The king says to them. They said, our God can protect us from you. But if he does not, we still won't bow to you. They didn't know that when they were going to be thrown into the fire that they were going to be met by Jesus Christ himself or God. Sorry. They didn't know that they were going to be met in the fiery furnace. But they had faith that God can deliver them. And if he does not, it's not this if you can, God. It's God can deliver us. But if he decides that he chooses not to deliver us, we still will not bow a knee to you. That's faith. That's the faith of being thrown into the air, smiling and being caught by God. And so... God is willing to maintain it. The fourth thing that we're going to look is that God blesses when you surrender. So our base scripture was 1 Kings chapter 20. We're going to look at verse 4. It says, When the king of Israel answered, Just as you say, my lord, the king, I am yours, along with all that I have. 
He sa- he, what, what is he saying? He, he's giving up everything. He's being conquered, okay? He is being uh, conquered by another king. And he has an option. He can either fight or he can surrender. Those are his options. Because the, king, the other king has said to him, he says, all your gold, your wives, your son, it's, it's mine. What does that mean? You've got two ways about this. You can give it to me or I can take it. And it will be mine. I will get it. And so he has the option. Now what, is, what does he do? What does the king do? He says, all right, just as you have said, my Lord, the king, I am yours along with all that I have. I'm giving it over to you. Everything I have now belongs to you. This is the surrender that God is calling us to. It's mine. Are we going to answer this way or are we going to fight? Are we going to answer with I surrender or are we going to fight? Romans 7.18 says, For I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my flesh. For the, de- excuse me, for the desire to do what is good is with me, but there is no ability to do it. So, you must deny self once and for all. You must deny self. It goes on to say, denying self must every moment be the power of your life. And then Christ will come in And take possession of you. Everything I have God. Is yours. Everything that I am. Is yours. Every moment. Of every day. And it's and then. Christ will come and take possession of you. So what about people who say well. I want to rededicate my life. I want God to do a work in me. I want to be different. But I can't seem to accomplish this. The power of our life. The power comes from God. When we deny self. Even Jesus says this. Deny self. Take up your cross. And follow me. We must deny self. And if we do. This is the promise. And then Christ will come in. And take possession of you. The question is the same question. That I pose to you. Is the same question I posed to that little boy yesterday. Do you want that? Is that what you want? Because absolute surrender. God can only take possession. When we say. I will deny self. Take up my cross. And follow you. When people come to me and they say. Oh, I have a sin issue. I have issues that, that, are, that keep coming up in my life. Things that reoccurring. I know what the problem is. Don't you? You don't deny self. I have an issue with pride. Deny self. I have an issue with addiction. Deny self. I have an issue with, with, uh, with, with, um, with gluttony or, or with, with wealth, with greed. I want God to fix it. Deny self. Surrender. In absolute surrender. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 says, Therefore, since we also have such a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every hindrance and the sin that so easily ensnares us. 
Let us run with endurance the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the source and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, I want you to think about this. And you, somebody's going to come up to me and say, you stepped all over my toes. Okay, and I'm about to because I want to stomp all over your heart, really. I want you to think about this. Read that line. That for the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross. Do you think the joy that lays before him was to just see people decide to believe but not surrender their will to him? Do you think that the joy he saw to endure the cross was so people could come into a sanctuary, hear about him one hour a de- of, a, of the week and go about their life and not give him a second thought and think, I'm doing my duty. Do you think that he endured the cross for the thought I can party on Saturday and be in church on Sunday. Do you think that he endured the cross so that people could say, let me earn this from you by the work that I do? That you think he endured the cross for the idea that if I do enough good... I get a better position with Jesus Christ. If my good outweighs my bad. If, you, if you're one of those, if you think, my, if my good outweighs my bad, then I have, a higher, I have a better place in God. You're in the wrong religion. You need to go to Hinduism. That's called karma. The Bible is against that. You cannot do enough good. Do you think the joy that lay before him that he endured the cross was for people that were willing to surrender everything to him? Do you think that the surrender of your will and life to him will come at too high of a cost to you? Do you love Christ? Do you long to be in Christ and not like Him? We strive to be like Him. I can't be like Him. He's perfect. He was sinless. I can't be like Him. But I can be in Him. I can be surrounded by him. He can be in me. I can surrender everything that I have to him. If you answered yes to do you love Christ, do you long to be in Christ and not like him, let death be the most desirable thing on earth. Death to self and be united with Christ. I'm going to ask them to come and play a song and give you a chance to respond to these words. I would love to tell you that I can take complete credit for this, but I, I just, I, 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 like I said, I pulled this out of this book, Absolute Surrender by Andrew Murray. If you would like to go and, and get you a copy, they're, they're pretty cheap on Amazon. It's a hundred-year-old book. Nobody really wants it. But I hope that the words that he wrote, every fill in the blank that you put in there is out of the book. Those are not my words. I would love to take credit, but I can't. But what we know is that God can use words written 
hundreds or thousands of years later. My prayer for you is the same that I pray for me, that I want for me, that I want absolute surrender. Everything that I have. What we covered today is just the first part.